Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to show you how to operate the Mitsubishi Electric remote control and this one goes with the FH model and it might work with additional models but this is what it comes with. So I'll go ahead and show you um, how, how to operate this. So the number one thing to know is the mode of operation. Okay, so when it comes to the mode of operation, I'll try to make it look to where you see this better. There it goes. So um, that's this button right here and what that does for you it shows you it tells you whether you're in the heat mode or cooling mode so i'll cycle through all of the modes and i'll explain what all of them do um, so the other thing to keep in mind is if you don't hear a beep from the wall mount unit when you make a change in the setting it means that the wall mount unit does not know that you've made that change. So I've had clients call us thinking there's something wrong with their piece of equipment and it's only because the remote was either too far away, pointed in the wrong direction, or it was just merely not communicating with the wall mount unit. So I'll go through the mode. So right now we are in the heating mode and you can see at the top line there, there is the symbol of a sun. So each brand does it a little bit differently. Mitsubishi, they chose that symbol. So that's what it means. And most of this stuff is in your manual. Sometimes it may be hard to understand because it's translated from Japanese to English and some, some of the terms used are lost in the translation. So um, sometimes it's hard for homeowners to figure out what exactly the manual says. So I'm doing this video to help you figure that out. All right, so let me get to it. So in the heating mode, um, in the winter time, so usually from fall to spring, we recommend that you always use this mode. Um, then if you go over to the fan mode, this causes the unit just to blow the fan and uh, no heating, no, no cooling. If you hit the mode button again, it'll go to the outer mode. All those arrows circling each other, that's what it means. So it means that the unit will have a set point, in this case it's 71 degrees, and what can happen, the unit will either heat or cool the space to maintain that temperature that you're putting in. Now, the only drawback with that is that in most cases, there's going to be a four and a half degree Fahrenheit variance from that set point. So in this case, the unit can go all the way to 75 and a half degrees before it will start cooling, or your room temperature might fall all the way down to, I think that would be 66.5 degrees before it starts heating. So for most of us, that's not comfortable and we would probably want to maintain a tighter temperature. And so because of that, we don't recommend using this mode. Also, another thing that's very common, a lot of these units, like in this case, you'll see there is this one unit here, there's going to be one in this other room, and then one in the opposite from there, and then there's another ducted system downstairs. So it's a multi-zone system, and in multi-zone systems, let's say that this room that we are in right now needs heating. So let's say that the outdoor unit is operating in the heating mode. Let's say that um, another room, someone in another room needs cooling. They are not going to get cooling until the people in this room are happy and this temperature is achieved and this unit shuts off. Then the other room can go into the heating mode. All right. So because of that, it doesn't work for most people. So we don't recommend using this mode ever again. You know, so not, not in the cooling mode, not in the heating mode, not in the spring and the fall, although those two times might actually be a good time for it. But it, it's just not comfortable for most people. So I'll hit that button again. And that's supposed to be an icicle, so that's the air conditioning mode. So we recommend that in the summertime, you keep it in this mode at all times. And this is the dehumidification mode, or dry mode, as the manual calls it. And what this does, it tries to remove a lot of humidity. And if you care about the technical differences in the background, what happens, basically this indoor unit will get really cold, the fan will blow very slowly, which allows the coil to collect a lot of moisture. The outdoor unit will run at a very high speed if necessary to get rid of that moisture, but um, it's not going to cool your house very much, but it will cool it some in the process of removing moisture. Okay, so the dry mode is going to be valuable certain times uh, depending on the climate you're in and the area you 
you um, live in and what the weather does. Um, in our area here, um, Pacific Northwest, um, we get a lot of days that are not really hot, but they are humid and they feel very uncomfortable. So that mode of operation would actually work really well. Uh, we do have a client who said, um, I think we installed that system for her probably 11 or 12 years ago. It's a Mitsubishi system. It's working flawlessly. Um, and she said that in the summertime, they only have it on the dehumidification mode. So in their particular situation, they have three zones, um, fairly small area, but um, they, they be, the unit basically tries to maintain a certain humidity level in the home. And coincidentally, that also happens to be comfortable enough for them temperature wise. And we understand for humans, uh, temperature and humidity go hand in hand. So that's, that's kind of cool that I got that feedback. All right, so that's the, the, the humidification mode, and you just set it and forget it. Basically, it does its own thing. Um, I'll go back to the heating mode because this seems to be the most commonly used uh, mode in our area because we get um, cold winters at times and you know cold nights during the spring and fall, and sometimes even in the summer. So most people tend to have their units operating in the heating mode almost all the time. So... The temperature setting, you know, set the temperature down, set the temperature up. That's very, very standard, nothing to explain there. Then there is an on and off button here, obviously it shuts the unit entirely on or off. Um, some of the things I can say about this is that the unit may be close to another unit behind the wall. So you sometimes have to be careful that you're not communicating with an unintended component of your system in another room. So if you have any malfunctions, just maybe refer back to this video and see if any of those things apply. So um, I'll talk about some of these other buttons here. So the Econo Cool, this mode is more for areas like California where they have brownouts and restrictions on their power usage or different prices on power use. So during the peak times, um, you can set your unit in Econo Cool and it really minimizes the unit's capacity. This is a variable speed system and variable capacity. So what that means is you have the opportunity to have some cooling and not cause your, um, collectively between you and all your neighbors, if you have your systems running at their highest capacity, cause your entire grid to go down. So by, ha by having some cooling, everybody gets some cooling and nobody goes without cooling. So that's what that's for. In Washington state, uh, to my knowledge, there is no need for that and you probably will never have to use that. This next mode here is called powerful. And what that means is if you go away for a weekend and let's say you set your temperature down to 60 or something like that. We never recommend setting it below that. And with Mitsubishi, you cannot set it below 61. And with um, with other brands, you may go down to like 59, but it's not healthy for a number of reasons for your home to go below that. So um, I can explain why if you want to give me some comments or questions, I'd, I'd be happy to explain why. Um, anyway, so let's say you're gone and you've set your unit back to save some energy. And when you come back, instead of letting the unit slowly ramp up, uh, it may take it a few minutes. If you press the powerful button for 15 minutes, it's just going to throw as much heat as it can. And if it's in the AC mode, the same thing. If you just got home, it's hot at home, the unit was off or something like that, you can just press the powerful button. It will go into the most powerful mode, which I might as well do that now just to see what happens. And it's going to ramp up the fan, it's going to ramp up the outdoor unit, and you're, you're going to get as much heat as you possibly can. All right, uh, smart set is obviously a way for you to learn your patterns. Natural flow um, is, is, a, is a quiet uh, way of operating the unit, basically setting the fan in a lower setting. And there may be a few more features to that one that I'm not familiar with, so uh, we may have to refer back to the manual about the natural flow. Um, and there is one option, it might be this one, where it reduces the operation of the outdoor unit so it doesn't wake up your neighbors, which is usually not necessary. With ductless heat pumps, because they are so quiet, even on their highest speed, that's never an issue. Okay, so I will talk about the fan mode here. So I'm going to take the powerful off now and we'll go back to what we had. Let's go to 72. And in the fan mode, um, right now, if you look over here, that's your fan setting. 
and when you see that little circle next to the fan it means that the fan is in the auto mode that means the unit will control the fan speed and obviously it'll ramp up to give you more heat or ramp down to keep it quiet and more efficient uh, based on the temperature that you tell it you want it in the home and some other factors so we recommend you always leave it on the auto mode um, at times people think that they don't want their fan to ramp up ever like maybe in the bedroom for example and then you can turn it to this mode which is basically below the first speed it's it's a very low speed which allows it to run very very quietly you probably cannot hear it if you stand in the room and unless you're very close to it the next speed if you press this button goes to speed number one two three on some units that's all you get three speeds in this one you get four speeds and, and then it cycles back to auto um, the only time i would ever recommend the fourth speed is if you again want to simulate what the powerful mode does um, that's basically what it does it cranks everything up so you're sort of simulating the same thing or if you just want to move air across the room more or maybe in the ac mode or in the heating mode there are certain areas of the room that the unit serves that are not necessarily getting the same temperature as the rest of the room so you might want to break up those tight spaces like that so i could see some uses for that but in most cases the auto feature is the best choice to use um, this button right here basically just adjusts the louvers up and down so auto mode is again the best way to go um, you can adjust them in different modes and you can see on the unit how those un how those louvers will move um, and right now it's actually thinking so it won't do it right now because i um, gave it a few more inputs and i think there's something else happening in the system to where this unit is waiting on other units to finish up so um, anyway so i'll go back to the so this mode right here the louvers will all will oscillate up and down continually so some people like that so but i'll just put it back in the auto mode and this one does the same thing for left to right um, I'm sorry that's left and right I apologize so this one has two sets of veins on the left side and the right side and this one up here does left to right adjustment so this one is continually oscillating from left to right this one is far away on the left middle middle right right again oscillating and what I will do here is I will press this button which means it won't blow on people okay so that gives you that symbol there and this little eye, this little rotating device, this rotating device here looks for hot spots and cold spots and tries to recognize where there are uh, bodies in the room to, to not blow the air on them. So it makes it very, very comfortable. And um, also it allows you to set it to where um, it blows and directs heat at the cold spots of the room. So anyway, these are most of the features that most people use. If you go into the scheduling of the timer, I'd be happy to answer your questions about that. Just feel free to ask me uh, how you'd like to set it and I can walk you through that. It's a little bit more complicated, but I just wanted to give you a preview on the main controls on the remote. All right, thank you so much for watching and feel free to post your comments and questions below. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions.